Hello everyone. Can we sit down so we can start the talks? Yay. If there's not enough chairs, sorry. But there's three over here. Two over here. A couple one over there. So what took us a little bit of extra time to get started was because we are actually live streaming this meetup. So um, the two talks are live streamed on the Bitcoin Magazine YouTube account right now. So That's not actually yay. true. That doesn't exist. Oh. Yeah, but it'll be on Bitcoin Magazine. And if you look at the Bitcoin Magazine Where? Twitter account, you'll see it. Okay, so... We don't have the YouTube account. So the, the link to the, the live stream is going to be tweeted yeah, by the Bitcoin Magazine Twitter and... You want to retweet that or something? That'd be cool. Um, yeah, we no, we need no, yeah, we need we need that on. Yeah. <laughs> no music. <laughs> All right. So um, our first speaker tonight is Jim Thompson from Pavilion, and he's going to be talking about uh, blockchain beyond currency. visit to the Keekdom and uh, this Bitcoin meetup, so thank you for having me. And I want to try, this, try to keep this brief and informative and, um, you know, I just would like everyone to collaborate and uh, keep an open mind. So, uh, here we go. My talk is on Bitcoin Beyond Currency. Now, obviously, everyone here is familiar with Bitcoin as a currency, um, I assume. Um, yeah, some people may be um, new to Bitcoin and, and, and not un understand it or, or be unfamiliar with it. Some, some may be you know, quite familiar with it. But um, not a lot of people are, are thinking about Bitcoin beyond using for currency transactions. Or, you know, but not too many people that I know. So anyway, so let's, let's think first about what, what makes Bitcoin a good currency. Does anyone have a suggestion? Forging to IRS is a Nazi. What was that? Forging to IRS it is a Nazi. That's right, that's right. So it has favorable uh, tax treatment uh, by the IRS. <laughs> uh, um, anyone else? Spongible. Spongible, that's right. Sort of. Most sort of, mostly. Is it? <laughs> Can't be counterfeited. Can be counterfeited. That's good. It's good. So it's and what is it that makes it not unable to be counterfeited? Math. Math. So right. So we have we have so math, algorithms, and in my, I think the big one, decentralization. Irreversible transaction. That's right, and irreversible. Trustless. Trustless. Censorship resistant. That's right. <laughs> Trustless, so. <laughs> irreversible. So, so anything else? Anyone else have any ideas? Um, so I think we've, got, we've hit on the major ones. It's, it's decentralized, so it, you know, it exists on a distributed network which enables it to be irreversible. Um, it also uses math and algorithms, which make it software and make it easy to trans transmit. And it also enables um, ad hoc adjustments. Um, people can create other coins using the Bitcoin. Um, and it also, um, yeah, it, it has, for that reason, it has, you know, it allows for many currencies. Um, and what is the backbone of the Bitcoin? Anyone? The blockchain. The blockchain, of course. So, what is the blockchain? The blockchain is public ledger, exactly right. And it's decentralized public ledger, uh, public ledger for recording transactions. And that's pretty much all it is. So, um, most of you, or many of you, likely have, have seen how, how Bitcoin 
has you know, created <coughs> global commerce as a currency. Uh, but let's let's think about how we can use the technology to to solve other problems. And in particular, I'm thinking law, governance, and finance. So what we're dealing with is we have now we now have this blockchain, which is a toolkit, which is decentralized software. Uh, allows multiple currencies, allows ad hoc adjustments. How can we how can we use this this toolkit to solve problems in law, governance, and finance? Um, so, what other applications could be used with this public ledger that is uh, you know irreversible and, and, and it is decentralized and can't be changed? Um, bounties. Bounties. Bounties could be could be, could be an example. Anyone else? Voting. Voting. Voting is a great, great example. You can create an entirely new way of issuing stocks. That's right. And then and, and paying dividends. That's right. Um, go ahead. Uh, smart contracts. So smart. Yep. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I was just going to say contracts that execute automatically based on certain conditions and can't be altered once they're agreed to. That's right. So you, have, you would have a, a smart contract. Is, 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 Great example, and it's, it's fairly broad. So you have, you have predetermined outcomes, so outcomes determined in advance by the parties, and then you would have an automated system of self-interpreting and self-enforcing the contract to be consistent with those predetermined outcomes. So that that would, that is a smart contract in a nutshell, um, in my mind, and that is a good use. Anyone else? There are people using this stuff already for things like DNS, and there's something called Twister that's a lot like Twitter. Twister, yes. I, I, I haven't heard of Twister, but that's, that's cool. So yeah, there's things out there already. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, how, how, does it, how does the Twister work? Basically, you know, your account, your, your username comes from like generating a, a unique ID, and uh, you know, it's distributed in a way that it can't be suppressed. So it's it's uh, you know good for your revolutions. That's right. It can't be, re it can't be repudiated or suppressed. Right? Um, so, what you know? Let's, let's talk about like a real world example on how this might work. Um, so let's say you know for example a smart contract, a simple smart contract, and you've got a chef in Manhattan, and he, he needs truck. He needs a bunch of truffles for his restaurant. So he, you know, his one option is to go to the ridiculously overpriced bodega and pay, uh, you know, pay for the cost of however many middlemen the truffles have been shuffled through. Or alternatively, he could go straight to the source and find someone, say, anywhere in the world, in Italy or wherever, and, and who has the truffles, who's growing truffles, and can enter into a direct peer-to-peer -peer contract with that person, and then uh, put it into a smart-enabled wallet, which will um, only release the funds once the outcome is verified. So once the, the truffles have been delivered, or shipped, or however you would like to you know, structure your, your smart contract. Um, yes? How do you get the input that the truffles got delivered? So that, I mean that's a good question. And, you know, the, the, there's 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 a lot of different you know ways to do it. So, you know, one way to do it is simply to have the chef confirm that the shuffles have been delivered, and then and then rely on a, a, a reputation system to you know or, you know whether it be a, using your real name or some sort of pseudonym. Um, other ways there's other verification methods that that you know that people are thinking about. Um, but uh, you know, interacting with, in, uh, allowing the blockchain to interact with the real world is definitely some uh, a challenge. It's uh, a great question. What are more than some of the other ideas? Uh, arbitration yeah. and uh, escrow release. Escrow. <clears throat> what about what about financial products? Like, 
insurance. Derivatives, insurance. Derivatives. Oh, options. Anything. Warranty. Warranty. Life insurance. Notary. No need for a notary. No need for a notary because it's a, the, it's, you can't repudiate the signature. Um, so I think this is a good time uh, to, I'm going to switch gears here and I'm just going to introduce uh, a concept that, uh, you know, a, a use of word blockchain that, that, uh, that we've developed at my company Pavilion. Um, So that's the, there's a site, pavilion.io, contracts without borders. Oh. Okay. So the idea is to have a way to securely upload, sign, and send, and store, and verify any contract by anyone located anywhere in the world with ease and low cost. Signing made simple. So this is, if you were to visit pavilion.io, these are the steps. Just upload any document. If you're the person who created the document or is responsible for its execution, uh, enter the names and emails and if company, if applicable, if it's uh, signing on behalf of a corporate entity of, uh, of the parties that need to sign. Uh, then an email is automatically generated and sent to all those email addresses. And, and instructs them to make a small Bitcoin payment to a unique address, and then your Bitcoin transaction ID serves as a signature. And so you don't need to actually put a, a pin to paper at all, because your signature is just the Bitcoin transaction. Um, and then it, it, you can keep the contract and store it in the Pavilion database for verification, and you can also look at the blockchain for verification of the signature. And this costs, I think, about 40 cents. So, um, you know, I urge you all to give it a try. Um, so, and more on the vision of the company. Um, we want to utilize the blockchain to provide secure, user-friendly applications to consumers and enterprises alike. Uh, we, we value equality, and, and we want to, to make, uh, we, we, you know, we are efficiency. Um, enthusiasts, and we want, we want to make um, these, you know, where, where blockchain uh, technology will allow, we want to make things as efficient and user friendly and cheap as possible, and and you know, the, give you the uh, the confidence to enter such a, a transaction like a tr like a buying truffles for someone halfway around the world. Uh, as far as our future, what we're working on right now is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer trustless exchange. Uh, that being the truffle kind of idea, and, and, and also allowing for uh, smart enabled equity management, I think as we discussed, uh, where you would essentially have a, you know, a, a corporate organizational document that is managed in a wallet that will, will distribute dividends and and other equity and other, other like value that comes into the corporate entity automatically and as determined by by the contracting parties in advance. So this would be good for issuing stocks and issuing dividends and um, and would eliminate if not or would reduce, if not eliminate, you know, the need for lawyers and financial professionals and to be looking over all of these things and, and, and you know, make, um, make them accessible to more people and, and increase efficiency. Um, smart, or binary options is very simple. It's just uh, two choices and, it, you know, it's almost um, akin to gambling. It's, and uh, so this would be and this would encompass derivatives and uh, other financial products. Um, you know, now it's, it's very simple binary options that, that we're working on, but we plan to you know, offer complex derivatives, or at least uh, trading platforms uh, for complex derivatives 
that exists in a, a secure cryptographic environment. And then on the horizon, what we're looking for, and what we're, uh, some ideas, other ideas we have to answer someone's question, uh, on the how to use blockchain to, um, in other ways outside of currency, is a world clock where you can verify the time using the distributed decentralized network. Um, and, and we would call it Satoshi time. And, and another idea that we're working on is the verification of posted mining services. So um, I don't know if a lot of you are familiar with how Bitcoin mining works and other cryptocurrency mining works, but uh, there's a trend now for, for consolidation of the mining equipment and, and, and people not wanting to keep it in their houses. So, <laughs> so, so, so people are now, you know, you're paying, you'll buy a piece of equipment and have it hashing and mining Bitcoin or whatever cryptocurrency, and you just need a way to verify it. And and you know, this uh, our platform, you know, we're, we're we're working on a way to provide that. So I think I'm going to open up to questions. Um, how do you secure the content in the like how do we? Yeah. So you upload a document, and right. you said the transaction ID is the signature. <laughs> um, is, that's the signature that the contract is executed, at, or is it the signature of the document? Like so that that that, sig that transaction ID is the signature of that person's the ID of that person or your signature on that document. But and then everyone, and then the, the signer and everyone else part of the document is sent the information, and you can see it, the, the the transaction ID of everyone else who signed it. But and then in the blockchain, or you know, is the is a hash, you know, some sort of verification of the content of the document stored. So the the document will be, is stored in our secure database, and so the, so the hash doesn't. I and mean, the, the, the document itself is not actually uploaded onto the blockchain. Understood. So, so um, you know, that's so to answer your question, I guess no. It's do um, have to trust you that the document is the original document. You have to. You you do. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Yeah. So yes. why did you base this on the Bitcoin on on using the actual Bitcoin blockchain and not just clone the technology and build in this thing that this gentleman's talking about? That would solve two problems at once. Well, that's true, and I, I, you know, I'm aware of other projects that are working on doing maybe that exact thing. We believe a billion that Bitcoin and the block, the Bitcoin blockchain specifically, are already, um, you know, very accepted and widespread, and in, in very in, in the every day are becoming more and more accepted. And you know, we we being you know efficiency gurus, we see no reason to, to reinvent the wheel. And we think that you know these are just this is just the beginning of, of, of what we want to offer, and not and not the end. So so you know but, you know as you know the technology and, and, and coding capability and the algorithms uh, complexity you know, increases, we'll be able to to offer services um, similar to you know, to verifying. Yes. Uh, kind of related to these two other questions. Uh, do you plan on uh, hosting the uh, the secure database on some sort of decentralized uh, platform of some sort, or? Uh, um, that's a great idea. Good. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that, that, that's a, that's a great idea. And we we haven't uh, you know we, we started at, at with this idea you know about a month ago, or less than less than a month ago. Um, so we're you know we're we're iterating and um, you know, we want to make it better and uh, and. And that's, you know, that's a great idea. Anyone else? Um, what about it, the situation where the uh, contractual agreement um, as, as on the blockchain bumps up against state law for enforcement of the contract? Or, let me give an example. What if sure. I upload my will um, okay. and use the blockchain, make a little, you know, um, substantiate, um, substantiate that it's my document based on the blockchain and stuff like that. But then when I die, California wants a will with two uh, witnesses. Sure. So, do you see that there may be some conflict? So, <laughs> I, I think this was alluded to earlier by someone else, but uh, yes, it, it may, you know, we, we do um, stand behind this 
mechanism of simple mechanism of signing a document as valid and legally binding in all 50 states and consistent and with the eSign Act and you know the eSign Act was signed and, and implemented in the year 2000 and now it's been 15 years and there's still these archaic um, you know codicil um, execution requirements and it, and they exist in you know I'm a I'm a former attorney and you know, of having worked in other common law jurisdictions abroad, you know, there are lots of, lots of instances where weird, you know, they have weird time and like, and then, you know, who witness requirements, and, and, and we believe that these are going to be slowly phased out as, as people, you know, will value efficiency and recognize that this is, 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 is you know, provides even greater uh, verification than, than like a, a witness signature or something like that. So that's, yeah. Uh, you mentioned earlier about uh, you know cutting out lawyers and things like that. Are you guys going to offer any lot of services for helping drafting up uh, those contracts for let's say you know a lot of people here just starting startups? Yeah, well you know. that's you know so one thing we would consider and that would, you know I've actually thought of is, is having a you know having some, some uh, you know format some some precedent or. A, Example documents right. that, that 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 people can use, and they're oh, very okay. simple. And, and awesome. you know, because startups, you know, they don't, they don't, you know, startups is, have gotten way too complicated. <laughs> and there's now, I mean, even with, with these, you know, fast, you know, Y Combinator documents, it still requires, you know, all, you know, many pages of right. of agreements and several documents. And why can't it all be done in one document? You know, very simply. Yeah. So so we I, I we do have a um, you know, sort of a standard form startup uh, LLC agreement that, that that we plan to post on there, and, and that people will be able to utilize um, along with the the, the equity management um, tool. So, awesome. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Um, yeah. How is the digital signature here tied to your actual identity? It's tied. To, it's uh, so it's it's it's. Would be considered a pseudonymous identity, so it's actually sent to every other person who signed the contract, and it's visible to every other person who signed the contract. And the person who's entering, who uploads the contract, enters each person's email and a name, and then and then you, you that so then that so in that way, only the people who are party to the contract can verify it, and we can also verify it. In our database, which will be verified someday by a decentralized um, protocol, but um, and so that's how it ties together. Is that clear? Yeah. I I don't get it because I can have his email and everything and say I'm him and sign a document and not be him at all. So unless you see me in person, how do you know? Well, you could say this about any. I mean, the way document signing works today is, is, is um, you know just. People just collect signatures. Yeah, but if I walked into my lawyer's office and said I was him, you would laugh at me because I am definitely not a guy. <laughs> you know, but if he gave me his email address and uh, you know, I could just so so I mean, in, like in, in the case of someone hacking someone else's email, that's yeah. that's a vulnerability that, that you know we'll, we'll, we'll work, you know we would like to work on. I mean, I know you guys value efficiency, but sometimes some of the stuff that is done is puts a roadblock in on purpose. To make things harder for people to do, so that they don't commit fraud. Yeah. Well, is is the kind of the idea that you use the same key pair over time, maybe, and you've signed things before with them, so you know you're, you have, you see the public key, you can verify that it's the same private key, right? That's sort of the idea. That, 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 it, yeah. It's it's not actually like that. I mean, right now, it's yeah. it's very simple, and it, it generates a unique address for each each signature that you would sign. Okay. Um, that's another good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Each person's email be tied to. to uh, Sorry. Uh, so I'm going to thank you. Uh, if you guys have any questions or want to reach out to me or email me, email me. Cool. Thank you. Uh, so our second presenter tonight is John Light and how Bitcoin can save the free market. Something like that. Bitcoin. 
So a little bit of background on this presentation. A, a couple weeks ago, um, somebody from the San Francisco Bitcoin Desk Meetup, I think it was actually Casey, it was saying how they, they were looking for a new project that they wanted to work on. And uh, I talked to the organizer, and he was saying that you know it, it had to be something with a tangible outcome. It should be something kind of open-ended that would never that would never stop. So I was thinking about a couple projects that I'm really interested in right now. Uh, one of them is called Dark Market, and then uh, excuse me, Dark Wallet, and the other one's called Open Bazaar. And Open Bazaar is a fork of software called Dark Market. And I wanted, I, I thought, you know, maybe we can marry these two things together so that we can have a uh, fully peer-to-peer -peer currency being used on a fully peer-to-peer -peer market. So this is what that presentation is going to be about. This project that we're going to work on at the SF Bitcoin Dev Meetup. For those of you who aren't familiar with Dark Wallet, it is a Chrome extension with a Firefox version coming soon. Uh, it is a privacy-centric wallet uh, with some unique security features we'll go over. Uh, it is currently alpha version, and it is built with love and JavaScript. <laughs> Lots of JavaScript. Um, so, so some of the unique security features it has are um, secure, uh, or excuse me, cooperative uh, multi-signature funds. So, for those of you who don't know, multi-sig means that you can create a transaction that requires multiple signatures in order for the transaction to, to execute. Um, in the context of a market, you can imagine a, a two of three uh, transaction where you have the buyer and the seller and some sort of third party uh, dispute uh, res resolution service, uh, all party to the transaction. If the buyer doesn't receive the products, then they don't sign the transaction, and then they, it's up to the dispute uh, arbiter to you know, step in and provide that extra signature and determine where the funds are going to go. So this is something that's built into Dark Wallet right now, and it's, it's generally good for managing cooperative funds uh, and creating transactions without central points of control or failure. Uh, it, some of the privacy features that Dark Wallet has is uh, the ability to send, pay, send and receive payments from a self address. So basically you can put a fixed address on a static location like a, a website or a, a business card or something like that. And uh, nobody else will be able to determine how many transactions or who is, who's sending transactions to that self address. Um, it also incorporates coin join transactions, which disconnect uh, sender and receivers in the blockchain. So it's, it's difficult for people to kind of monitor who is actually sending transactions to who, and it helps protect the privacy of uh, senders and receivers of transactions. And I want to marry those features with uh, software that's being worked on right now called Open Bazaar which is about to release a beta version. Uh, you can find out more information about OpenBazaar at openbazaar.org. And what OpenBazaar is, is a decentralized marketplace. It's a bit like if eBay and BitTorrent had a baby, <laughs> OpenBazaar would be the result. So it uses the same kind of technology as BitTorrent to create a fully distributed peer-to-peer -peer market. Uh, you'll be able to create a marketplace listing with a picture, a name, description, keywords, and set the price in BTC, uh, choose a notary to verify the transaction, and an arbiter to solve any possible disputes. And, uh, and then people can look for uh, listings on a globally distributed uh, marketplace uh, where you'll be able to find merchants and all of the things that they're selling and uh, customers will be able to deal with the merchants in a fully kind of peer-to-peer -peer environment. So um, what we want to do at the SF Bitcoin Devs Meetup is marry these two things so that you have a wallet tab in OpenBazaar, uh, Bitcoin pricing and all of the marketplace listings, and then direct integration so that when you press buy, uh, it, it kind of auto-populates these Ricardian contracts that OpenBazaar is using to uh, codify everything and, and verify everything uh, using the multi-sig and stealth address the technology that, that Dark Wallet is kind of uh, incorporating. Uh, so just to kind of recap real quick, uh, who's doing this? Is, this, is a, this is a project that I'm organizing within the San Francisco Bitcoin Devs Meetup. Uh, it's going to be 
we're going to be integrating Open Bazaar with Dark Wallet, and uh, it's going to be at 20 Mission here in San Francisco every Sunday in September for the next few weeks, uh, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And we're doing this uh, so that we can free the market. So uh, if, if you can't attend the meetup uh, directly or if, or if you don't know how to code, that's okay. You can, of course, show uh, financial support to these projects independently uh, by just sending a Bitcoin donation to these QR code addresses, which uh, go to the respective projects. Um, thanks a lot for coming out, and I'll be happy to answer any questions here. Um, what is the use of the notary in such a system? So they decided, Open Bazaar decided to separate the, the duties and powers of the notaries from the arbiters. So the notary will. Um, the, the way the Ricardian contract system works is that it, it's tr there's, the contracts are triple signed by the buyer, the seller, and then the notary. And then the notary uh, will actually act as the third signature on a multi-sig address or transaction uh, based on an outcome that the arbiter tells the notary to execute. And um, so, if what's you, the perceived advantage of splitting those two? Um, well, it's uh, something that you probably want to talk to Washington Sanchez about. Uh, and he's a member of the Open Bazaar team. He, 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 I actually talked to him about this on IRC. It's, it's a little bit, you know, it, there's not really a TLDR, so you can, awesome. yeah, you can talk to him about the actual incentive structure that he's trying to set up by doing that. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so is there is it um, advantageous to just not using a notary but using a multi-sig transaction for verification of escrow release or, or whatever the contract? You know, my, when I talked to uh, Dr. Sanchez about this on IRC, I, I kind of asked, you know, well, what 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 is the advantage of doing that? When I think of it, I think of it as the arbiter being the the third signature on this transaction. Um, and again, it's, it's the justification for it is really something that you'll have to talk to uh, Dr. Sanchez about. He, he's kind of working out through the game theory and trying to set up the incentives so that the power and duties are segregated in such a way that prevents like, any kind of collusion, perhaps, uh, I think is, is kind of the goal of that. Yeah. yeah. Does the, um, so does Dark Wallet have like a, a JS client? That runs on a host machine with a web browser interface. Yeah, so it's a it's a it's a Chrome extension right now. Mm -hmm. So I imagine that you could uh, kind of run everything. It, it, everything's running locally, um, and it's all written in, in JavaScript, I think Angular, and and, and uh, some other JavaScript in the client. Does it run on Node.js? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. They're, all the files are in the GitHub. If you want to check it out. So, um, Open, Bazaar, Open Bazaar is to sell um, any kind of merchandise, legal or illegal, basically. I mean, <laughs> uh, you, should, you should probably follow the laws of your jurisdiction if you don't want to get exposed to any kind of legal risk. But it, what's legal in one place might not be legal in another. So, it's, it's, it's fully peer to peer. It's, it's kind of up to you to decide what you want to, what you want to list in the marketplace as well as what you want to buy. But um, if you use the onion uh, network, your I mean, can't can't the, your location be traced if you use Open Market? I mean, Open Bazaar. Is it anonymizing your? IP uh, there is nothing within the software itself that's anonymizing uh, your uh, you know your information. But there's there's no nothing preventing. I don't think uh, from adding some sort of anonymity layer, whether it's VPNs or or IDP, anything like that. It's just no one's really taken the effort to do that quite yet. It's, it's a very early version of the software. Right? Yeah. yeah? Do you have uh, any affordability plans where you might uh, facilitate a private transaction if, say, somebody that uh, wanted to sell something maybe was legal in a jurisdiction, wanted to sell it to other people that maybe understood it wasn't legal in a jurisdiction, and they could connect in a private transaction where they could share that? Well, uh, everything in the Open Bazaar uh, marketplace for, for discoverability purposes is, is searchable by anybody. 
Um, so maybe in the future. So uh, in terms of uh, privately, I, I don't. Uh, Tell me drugs. No. <laughs> so you could you could just create a listing for such a such a product and and maybe use a pseudonym rather than your real name. And that's about as private as it gets. There you go. With, with Open Bazaar. Okay. Open Bazaar is built on uh, which platform? They're built on uh, distributed hash table technology, kind of like BitTorrent. So uh, everything uh, first, when you create a listing, you you have you broadcast the file to the network, like almost right, like you're seeding a code, torrent. Code, code base. Is huh? in what language? Oh, I think they're using Python mostly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, a few a few months ago, Dark Wallet introduced a near introduced uh, Dark Market. Is it conflicting, or are they working together? To yeah, that, that's a good question. So, so you was mentioning how Amir Taki uh, was working with uh, some developers uh, from the company Airbits, and they won a hackathon in Toronto developing a prototype of the software called Dark Market. They put it on GitHub, and it ended up getting forked uh, because uh, people wanted a more uh, friendly sounding name. So uh, they just they just called it Open Bazaar and then took what they laid as the foundation with that prototype and, and actually filled it in with, with code that actually works. <laughs> yeah. Could you give some more details on the decentralization? Like who are the nodes? What are their incentives to, to stay up? Um, there aren't really any financial incentives to stay up as a node in Open Bazaar. Other than like if you're if you're a merchant and you always want your listing to be available to people, then your node needs to always be on. Uh, you can't just rely on seeders, so to say, to be providing your uh, listing to other people. So it's just a it's a financial incentive. Like how how often do you want your doors to be open to your listings? You know. Um, and then for dark wallet, they use. Uh, servers to handle the coin join transactions and those are federated servers and it's, it's the same kind of thing there's no real financial incentive other than you know wanting to support the network and improve your own privacy for your transactions last question last question ever <laughs> tonight anyways yeah you think? What is the actual service in which country? Uh, so with Open Bazaar, it's peer to peer. Anybody and anywhere can run a node. Um, for Dark Wallet, um, the, right now the servers are being run by Unsystem, but uh, you know anyone can set up a a server and it's federated, so they, the servers could run anywhere, and you can point. You can spin up your own server and point your wallet at your own server if you don't want to use someone else's. I mean, I understand you, you explain, I understand, but actual ones, the ones which they use right now, where they are? Uh, Do you know? Europe, own system is based in Europe. They're, they're a kind of decentralized group. They're, I don't know physically where their servers are located, maybe Sweden, some, somewhere like that, data haven kind of jurisdiction. And unfortunately, that was the last question, but if anyone wants to talk to me, I'll be around. Uh, thanks, thanks for your time tonight. Okay, just a couple of announcements. Bitcoin Saturday event, and instead we did a joint meetup with the um, Silicon Valley and Stanford and Draper University Bitcoin meetups at Draper University. Um, the topic was on the Bit license, and um, I think it was generally a really successful event, and we're probably going to be doing it again with different topics and stuff. And um, so, yeah. Hopefully uh, we can organize you guys to come down more. We didn't get too many people from the meetup up here. It might have been the topic. Uh, but hopefully we can maybe organize um, some sort of carpooling down for the next one. There's no date for the next one, but just to like keep in mind that it was pretty successful getting all of us together and 
it was kind of hard to collaborate, get all the groups together. So, um, But next month, we are doing Bitcoin Saturday, and it's going to be on September 13th, um, which is three weeks, two weeks, something like that. What is Bitcoin Saturday? It's a very casual kind of what we do here after the talk, just hanging out. Uh, our first one was actually uh, two months ago, and we had Tatiana Moroz perform. Um, so it'd be cool to find other entertainment um, if you are a performer. I know what I'm saying. Cool. I mean... <laughs> there, <laughs> that would be awesome. I'm, I'm totally down with that. I mean, <laughs> I mean whatever, whatever you guys, just send us an email and we can figure it out. Um, 20 Mission. Yeah, it's at 20 Mission. So um, they're, they're, we still wanted to do events with them, um, and they're kind of trying to have more events on the weekends, so we're trying to work with them for Bitcoin Saturdays. Additionally, if um, maybe we could work it out, it, we haven't really talked with them too much about it, but if we want to do kind of a vending thing like we did here three or four months ago, um, so setting up tables and if you want to sell things for Bitcoin or something like that, I don't know. So if you want to do something like that, email us uh, as well, because we just want to make this Bitcoin Saturday casual, but entertaining and fun. Um, cool. And so we all kind of voted on the logo, but not a lot of people, but we're still going to choose the winner tonight. <laughs> um, so, right up. I don't even think he's here, but yeah, I'm going to bring it up. So the winner of the logo <laughs> with like, probably like 15 votes or so. Yeah, not too many people voted. It was like... It was like 20% uh, of the vote out of 12 entries, so it was significantly higher than the other ones. Um, it was pretty spread out. It was like at least five more votes over than any other one. Um, so. You should general audience vote. Well, yeah, let us vote. Yeah. 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 So this is the winner. Yay! Adam Stoll's work, and he won half a Bitcoin, so whenever we see him, we're going to be sending him half a Bitcoin. Or, or we can do it over the internet, I guess. I guess it's good. Sorry? Is it like low resolution on purpose? I think it's like old school on purpose. He added like the, the detailing effects and stuff. Oh, I mean, I, oh, okay, yeah, you're looking at it here, I'm looking at it here. It's much better here. Um, we'll get a higher resolution for, for like, using it. Um, <laughs> I could probably make it smaller. So it's... Right? That looks better. I'll get a higher resolution, don't worry. It won't look silly. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. And that's kind of it for announcements other than the sponsors and the really awesome video work that we have going on tonight. So every... Uh, speaking meetup, uh, Money and Tech kind of does recordings of the main speakers and puts them out on their publication, and that's really awesome. The past ones have been really well produced, and um, they've been really reliable in doing that. So thanks to them for coming. And then in collaboration, it's kind of a Money and Tech and Bitcoin magazine collaboration because Ryan's here doing the live stream which is really great. Um, this is the first one that we've done, and I think we're gonna keep doing it and try to hopefully uh, convince other meetups to do this too, because it would be really cool to have more of a global community sharing like the things that we talk about at our own meetups with the world. Um, and so our main sponsor is Coinbase. Uh, they've been our sponsor for a year or two now. And they're great, and um, yeah, so Geekdom obviously gives us the venue, and 20 Mission gives us the other venue, and that's our sponsors, so thanks everyone for coming, and oh, yeah, well, yeah, Lightning Talks, but thanks everyone for coming to the meetups, and if you did a Lightning Talk, just uh, sign up for a Lightning Talk, just come over here, and we'll start them. So John... 
from Wine Furnace. Right, can someone give me the Wait, name of here. <laughs> can someone give me the name of a Bitcoin provider in the US where you buy your Bitcoin? Why like The other one? <laughs> so I'm trying to uh, remediate to that monopoly program right now. Uh, I'm trying to do a website that competes with uh, Coinbase. Really? Uh, so I have a website that are almost like 95% down, and I need a partner right now to uh, help me finish it, uh, like the security side of it. So he knows. Bitcoin D, you know the, the base for the websites, and also uh, basic security uh, add-ons to websites, so I can uh, launch it. Um, um, okay, so my advantage is that I have, uh, I have a bank account already, which is the main issue uh, for not having competition, so I already have that. And yeah, that, that's about it. So if you want to talk to me, I'm going to be on the side of that. Hey, so Let's Talk Bitcoin is a content provider and blog for Bitcoin-related content and news. And out eight weeks ago, they issued their own token on the counterparty protocol, so you can get paid not only to submit content, but also to read and comment on other people's articles, which is awesome. So how many people here own LTB coin? Nice. So I think that makes it a lot more fun and incentivizes me to read their content. I'm a scientist, and science is based largely on a publishing model. And so what we're proposing is a publishing system which uh, issues a crypto rewards token to incentivize the productive behaviors and hopefully uh, find the best science. And so get in touch with us. We've kind of found a way to extend this into two. <laughs> 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 for scientific publishing and it's powered by this reward token system in which for instance authors and publishers will buy the right to publish an article on the platform but the cool thing is at the other end of the chain people who actually add value to this article uh, like readers or commenters are actually getting paid by the token mm. so that's obviously a very simple example and can be more complex than that but the, the idea is like Beyond the very strong commitment of openness and transparency that such a platform has to have, this token system let us first switch um, the rewards system, like the reward process toward people who actually add value to the system, and second, build a community of stakeholders uh, whose interests we believe are way better aligned with good science. Thank you. But stay tuned for an article or something. Like Brian <laughs> from Blockchain. Hello. I'm going to be reading because I only have a minute here. Uh, blockchain Technology Group, also known as BlockTech, has a vision for blockchain applications far beyond financial remittance. Um, we're working on an unalterable ledger of history, a truly private marketplace using Tor, a new kind of lower cost, high speed media distribution. Um, safe and inexpensive securities and commodities training, or trading, an open source uh, point of sale system, a coin agnostic ATM, and a few other things that we aren't allowed to talk about right now. <laughs> the, uh, the company has four different departments, building distributed applications, um, developing crypto economies, designing hardware, and uh, offering consultancy services. The world is changing and technology and thought are evolving very quickly and a new economy is being created. And uh, the emergence of this new innovation is uh, being driven by the blockchain, and Blockchain Technology Group is here to step up and take control of it and help everyone out. We're uh, looking for beta testers for Project Alexandria, which is the uh, unalterable history of ledger, and uh, you can sign up on our website, blocktech.com. You can also apply for a job at blocktech.com, and feel free to just ask us any questions that you have. We will be around at conferences, and you can find us online.
Okay. Has anyone ever heard of Peter Kropotkin? He wrote a thanks. He wrote a book called Mutual Aid, and I wanted to draw a uh, comparison between the idea of mutual aid and the way that the blockchain works. So the blockchain works on a reward system. If you do enough for everyone, you get new bitcoins. Uh, the idea behind mutual aid is that it drives evolution. It makes what it makes evolution happen. And so it's sort of uh, really great that, that that coincidence is that way, isn't it? Yeah. That, that was extra quick. I can not say that. He also had a great beard. I can't read this name. Peru? Or Ifu, is your friend here? Oh. Ifu. <laughs> okay. Sure. Do you have a website? Do you have a website? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, all right, I'm here to talk about mining problems, really, to condense it down to the simplest format. So, <clears throat> when money initially started, it was, you know, hobbyists, you know, people who have computers, then we migrate to CPUs, then GPUs, and ASICs. You know, smaller consumers, then we move on to large companies. And my, my projection of the progression is that, you know, professionals are going to come in after these uh, small people, and then they're going to get driven out. And after that, if Bitcoin to succeed, nation state is going to come in. Right? And that is the progression of, of mining, because, like, the equipment still have to sit on lands which are owned by, you know, countries. And I really, I really, like, the last year, I have been monitoring the, the mining network on the geopolitical disbursement of how the mining power is being distributed. And currently we're at a we're at a small problem because at May I hear a rumor that Inner Mongolia is deploying large amount of mining power because there's a lot of coal and they have excess electricity and somebody made a great pitch saying, hey, you know, you can't move all these coal and electricity, but you can convert them to Bitcoin and move those instead. So they're like, all right, let's do that. So now they build these really large barns and 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 they're deploying large amount of power in Asia, right? And so I feel that that's going to be pretty important for people to rethink about. Like we're currently talking a lot about like um, policies and regulation. Oh, is it? <laughs> right, that's what I'm talking. Let him keep talking. What cliffhanger? Minor. We want to hear this. One, okay. one more minute. One more minute. All right. So. Uh, <laughs> Mining North America, you're going. You're going. You're going. Okay, like, 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 please pay attention to mining and our no count. No count went from 25k to yes. 7,000. Okay, like that's a big fucking problem. <laughs> So this is pretty quick, but um, can I just get a quick hands up for who likes playing poker? Oh, yes. Everybody uh, poker. Uh, so myself and a couple of guys were just running a Bitcoin poker event on the 19th of September um, in here, just downtown. So check out BitcoinPokerSF.com or come talk to us at the end. We're kind of looking for partners, um, so there'll be some vending hopefully, and it's not gambling, um, but mm -hmm. it's fun, right? So ah, ah. Okay, thanks. All right, so my name is Ben. I'm visiting here from Boston. You may recognize me. I've been involved in Bitcoin for a while, and I was also uh, on the Dogecoin Foundation, which was a trip. Um, <laughs> so two things. One is, uh, like I said, I'm in Boston, and if you don't know, MIT is doing a project where every student is getting $100 worth of Bitcoin. And so they're doing a lot of interesting hackathons and sort of building an ecosystem there. Um, so if there are any companies or services that are interested in like reaching out to the people in Boston, I might be interested in talking to you about that. And then also, if you're here and you have you're new to Bitcoin and you have like stupid questions, I really like answering stupid questions. Um, so if you're a service or a company that wants to reach out to Boston, or if you have dumb questions. Uh, I'll be over here in the corner and happy to talk to you. And uh, I would nominate Ifu for one of those last two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so I got a website, um, purehub.com. It's a store 
it's a marketplace, it's a community too, we just added the community, but um, really early stages still, but um, store has uh, close to thousands of products. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> pure hub. Yeah. Com. And it's got thousands of products. If you want to sell things, it's just like Craigslist or eBay. And then, you know, just check it out, hang out, community. It's still really new, so hopefully you guys check it out. Cool. Thank you. Hi everybody, this is just last minute, and I uh, think I'd be talking today, but um, I'm CEO and co-founder of Airbits, so we were mentioned as uh, contributors to the Dark Market Project, and we really do have a great focus on privacy, anonymity, but we are building products really for the mass consumer. Our big focus is on user experience, make Bitcoin look and feel easy for the mass market. So we've already launched a merchant directory, which you can use today. It's on iOS and on Android, and we are in beta for our iOS wallet which implements some great features, including being able to pay over BLE, not having to use a QR code. Um, that's only a sample of what we're putting in, but there's a ton of other functionality built into it. We're all looking for beta testers for iOS, and Android's coming about a week and a half from now. So if you're interested in seeing a demo, just come grab me after the meetup. And if you want to sign up for the beta, um, come grab me as well. And I'll get your contact information and send a beta to you guys. Thanks a lot. wraps it up for the speaking stuff. Um, we're here until about 10, so feel free to keep networking and drink more beer. Thanks. Awesome. <laughs>